Now there is life expectancy. And before I tell you anything about it, I just want you to look at this graph with me. I'm going to move it about in a second. And I just want you to, I'm going to do it a couple of times. I just want you to look and ask yourself two questions. Two questions. Uh, I've asked you these questions before. Number one, what do you notice? What do you notice when I, I move things around and change uh, what you can see? And what do you wonder? What can you observe? What do you notice about it? And what questions does this raise for you? Okay. So if we just have a look, you can see at the moment it's set at 1960, which is where this data begins. And if I just scroll a little bit, let's see how good my aim is. There we go. Okay, so now we're up to when I was born. Okay. So you can see not just the graph is changing, but you might also notice uh, these numbers down here are also changing. Let me take it back just so you notice that. Do you see the numbers are changing as well? So the whole thing is dynamic. Okay. So I'll bring it back. Like I said, here's 1985, which conveniently is pretty close to halfway through. Okay. And let's try and bring it a little closer to the present day. Okay. So here we go. Have a look at the numbers. See how everything is changing. Wow. Now, this is the most current data that we have. Okay. So remember I asked you two questions. The questions were, number one, what do you notice? What can you observe just by looking through that? And secondly, what do you wonder? So does anyone want to point out what's something that they notice about the data just right on the face of it? What, what do you see that stands Positive out to you? Gradient. Nick, what do you see? Hmm? What do you see? It's Say that again. Increasing. It's increasing, which is a good thing, right? So life expectancy over the last... 54 years has been getting better uh, and it's getting better across the board you might notice there's comparisons with other countries as well and even though not everyone is increasing at the same rate everyone is increasing okay good nick thank you something else that anyone else has noticed the increasing. say the that again ah okay so here's the fertility rate or the birth rate okay let me just go all the way back look at i know it's a bit small uh look at what it is here, by the way, I said this is the most up-to-date data. Um, why don't we have 2017 data? Because 2017 Well, number one, we don't have 2017, like it's not finished yet. Number two, we're at 2016, that's finished. So this data takes a long time to collect and put together. We'll talk about how we take all of that information and turn it into something like this shortly. But you can see at the moment, or most recently, this is what the fertility rate is. Let me just bring that back. And then I want you to watch just that number again. Can you watch that number? Let's go back to 1960. Did you notice a significant jump? Let me take it back. Okay, whoops, sorry. Okay, here's where it is now. Okay. Now watch, watch, is, watch what happens to the fertility rate for the last, oh, here we are, last sort of 10 years. Huh, that's interesting. If you go back a little further, not a huge amount of change still. This is going back, you know, 20 plus years now. Yeah? Watch, watch the number, watch the number. Still about the same, still steady. And then, Babies. look at that. What's going on here? What's happening in here? Have a look at the time. Have a look at what's happening. Okay. So, so, I heard someone say baby boomers, okay? Um, I know people are going to say, wait, isn't this a mathematics classroom? What are you talking about? Well, you cannot avoid, when you're talking about situations, you cannot avoid the mathematics in a situation, nor can you avoid, when you're talking about the mathematics of it, the social aspects of the situation, okay? Now, my parents are baby boomers. They were born in 1949. 1949, sort of 1946 to 1952, roughly, that's when baby boomers were born. Who does modern history here and knows what that period of time was? 1946. It was, it was after the Second World War, right? So First World War, Second World War, what happened in the middle of that? Really bad time for everyone. The Depression, the Great Depression, okay? But then following that, it was like, hooray, finally, like everyone knew after World War I, actually this war is not over, okay? World War I, World War II is kind of a bit of a misnomer. World War II was just the second act. In, yeah, sort of. <laughs> Any, anyhow, 
So that whole period of time was pretty nasty, which is why following that around here, you have this huge boom, hence baby boomers. But that's not what this is. That's, that, this is the completely wrong time period, right? Um, what we're talking about here, again, watch that jump. I'll just bring it back a little further and then you can see it just sort of go, whoa, kind of crazy, right? This is about contraception, okay? So before that, you, families were just so much larger. This is per woman, right? Per woman. Because it was just so much more difficult to control how many children were being born. But when we did have control, that had a big effect on this too. Did you notice that? Okay, so we talked about just the overall trend. We talked about uh, the fertility rate and its change and how it's decreasing. What else do you notice? Something happened in Japan in 1965. 1965. Mm -hmm. You're talking about this thing here? Because it's under, it's below, and then suddenly just jumps yeah, up. You do society and culture, we study Japan. Why did you tell us what happened in 1965? I don't remember what happened. Oh, well, how old this change here? This yeah. is what you're referring to? Yes, that change. Hmm. Now, interestingly, if I just look at this portion of the graph, at this portion of the graph, it's less that Japan has changed yeah. than that we've changed. Oh, yeah. do, you, do you notice that? Now, I will point out, this is just this portion of the graph, so I've taken everything off, but Japan has kind of this steadier rise, right? Well, I know it's bumpy, but everything is bumpy. At least it's sort of consistent, whereas we've just kind of flatlined for a while, and then we have this uptick, right? Uh, but we never catch up to Japan, as you can see. Any other last things that you notice about this? Do you have other oh, Australia and USA. Yep. Around here? Yeah. Oh, it's kind of for all of it. Like, they're kind of parallel. Yeah. Until 1980. Well, it does, it does start to spread out, doesn't it? Yeah. It starts to spread out. Okay. Now, because I'm not a sociologist, I won't dig too deep into that. But I wonder if you can think about all the information that you have here. And admittedly, it's quite limited at the moment. Could uh, someone who does economics help us work out what on earth this is? It starts, the G is for gross. Gross domestic product, okay? So if you don't know what this is, you need to write this down because it's very important. GDP. It stands for gross domestic product. Now, the reason why I point this out is because... This particular number is really, really important. I'm going to raise a question to you guys in a minute. But even though this is like an economics word, it's really important to us, number one, because it is a number. It's a, it's a value. It's a, um, it's a sum of money. They've listed it in US currency. Uh, let's just try and understand what it is. I'll do it in reverse. Product. So this is about something that a country produces. Okay. Some countries produce a lot of money. Money. Uh, some countries do not. A phrase that used to be um, heard throughout, thank you. Uh, the last few decades was Australia living, living off the sheep's back, right? In that a lot of our product, right? A lot of what the country produced was simply agricultural output, okay? And we exported that throughout the world. Domestic, what does domestic mean in this context? Domestic means within the country, within the country. So for a country, this is the stuff that we produce as opposed to stuff that we get in from elsewhere and import. Uh, and gross? Yeah, just, just the whole lot, okay? So gross domestic product is something that a country produces. It's a really big number, billions, trillions of dollars. But this is not gross domestic product. It's gross domestic product per capita, which is for each individual, right? So we take that amount of money and we divide it by your population at any given time, okay? So you can see at the moment, whoops, I'm really bad at dragging, there we go. You'll notice that number is significantly larger than what it was just when I dragged it from whatever it was, 1970 or something like that, okay? What, what's the reason for that? Say it again. Number one, mining. Okay, so we're producing, we're getting stuff out of the ground that's in Australia, which we can then sell, that kind of thing. That's one factor. There's another big factor. Come on, economics people. It's, um, it's, the, it's the, the value of the dollar. The value of the dollar changes pretty significantly over time, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, so what do we call this? Starts with an I. Inflation. Right? Now, I'm pretty sure this has not been adjusted for inflation. Okay. So that's why the numbers just kind of skyrocket. 